Hi, this is Emmy Thomas, and I'm here with Marion the Flash, and I'm going to ask Marion the same question I ask everybody, which is, what is it like to be you, Marion the Flash? Um, okay, I thought about this, so I'm going to say uh, lonely. It's the one word that comes to mind. Um, it's also fun and um, exhilarating. But I just, I guess I have, um, I suffer from like a depression because I know it's nothing that someone else will be able to see. And um, to have a beautiful thing or a beautiful life and not be able to share it is like, I don't know, it's depressing to me. So when you say lonely, is it like disconnected or you feel like you don't have uh, meaningful connections with the people that are around you? Like, do you have people in your life or you kind of don't have people in your life, I guess? Um, I've, I've gone through phases. Um, I think my happiest time is, well, I, I don't know. Um, I, I have a few people in my life, like a very small circle, maybe like three or four people I'll talk to on a regular basis. But um, I used to have a lot more and I just had to, I had to cut it down because it was just too much for me to handle. And I just, I just couldn't deal with it, you know? He, well, I know, but for people who may not know, <laughs> what do well, you mean by that? It's too much to handle. Well, it was too much to handle for me because um, whenever I talk to people, like, they kind of project onto me and, like, I got to, like, well, okay, I'll be honest. I said I wanted to be honest with this whole um conversation so for me it's difficult because first of all I speak convoluted because I don't want anyone to get too close to me and um I really just I can't stand hearing what people want and hearing what they think like so much and and then when it when it comes down to is that they're thinking something that's so disappointing to me so miserable so petty I just um you know, I just tend to lose hope and lose faith in them. And I just, I don't want to be around them anymore. Mm. And um, that has been happening to me often lately. Well, can you and think that, maybe of like a, an example, like a story maybe in the past or, or something like sometime that it's happened? Okay. Well, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was a time where I just was in a, I mean, you know, a social event, like a bar or a club or something like that. And um, I was around a lot of people and we were talking and, and a lot of things were happening and, you know, things always happen that I see, but most people don't see. And I'm used to just ignoring that. But um, every now and then I'll see people's true nature just come out or like when I'm in a social environment it's hard because sometimes you hear things like you'll hear people say things but you'll also see their face change like their body language will tense up or they'll start tapping or their eyebrows you know it's all in the eyebrows and it's just impossible for for a person like me to not receive all of that and it just it overwhelms me and then it, you know there'll be people that I care about you know like I have no real affection or relation with them. They're just, you know, they're friends, but they don't know how much they mean to me. And I'll see like their true desires or just, I don't know, something that I see is um, weakness. And I, I, I have a really strong code, you know? I feel like we should try to be like as pure as possible, you know, try to care about the other person as much as they care about you, you know, things like that. And if I like a person or if I love a person and I really care about them, I just always hope that they have those qualities. And every time I see that they don't, it's so disappointing for me. And it just drives me further under that rock, just all the way back to my show. Yeah. You know, I, something like this just happened to me a few days ago where I like saw, I suddenly had this realization about a person, you know, and about like some deep insecurity or something of theirs. And I was just like, Ugh, this is a burden. It truly, like, yes, I guess during my playground stage or something, I thought this is so interesting. People are so interesting. And no, I did, I think I, uh, I think it was be before I cared really about people. <laughs> it didn't seem like a burden. And now that I care about people, I think, 
oh, okay, this person has like, you, you know, whatever it is, like this person does is alcoholic, this has confirmed it to me, or this person is, you know, whatever, cheating on their spouse, or this person, you know, like does have this trauma or can't really can't do this particular thing. And because they're so, you know, conflict avoidant or something. And, th and just kind of like, I feel it in that moment, like the weight of the reality <laughs> and, and the future reality too. I remember there was, um, to kind of illustrate what I mean by the future reality. So um, my dad had a, uh, I, I was about to say chipmunk, but it was a hamster, but he really <laughs> loved this hamster. <laughs> And my little brother, his uh, his little school friend or whatever was like, hey, can you watch this hamster? You know, we're going on vacation. And my mom was like totally suspicious that they were just going to drop off the hamster and leave the hamster. <laughs> right? Because okay. like she's like, we, we don't need all this stuff for just the week that they're going to be on vacation. You know, they gave them absolutely everything and was just like, OK, have fun with the hamster. And my little brother didn't care for the hamster at all, but my dad like fell in love with this hamster <laughs> and would okay. like watch it for hours and like, oh, carrots, it, it put in its cheeks or whatever, you know, like endlessly fascinated by this hamster. Uh, long story short, the hamster ends up uh, leaving our lives this way is that my dad was out there cleaning its like little cage and he told my mom and my sister, okay, watch the hamster, put the hamster like in a bowl. And was like, watch the hamster, make sure it doesn't run away. And my mom said, we watched the hamster. We watched it get out of the bowl and run away. <laughs> okay. And, and where did he go? <laughs> he just ran away. We, oh, we wow. never saw the hamster again. Yeah, oh. that, that was the cold reality. But before that happened, the hamster was like this escape artist. And, um, you know, we were having like some big event at my my house, like some some whatever event, graduation party or or like a wedding wedding open house or something for for like one of my siblings and my parents had just recarpeted the entire house in preparation for like this big event but the hamster was an escape artist and it had gotten out and one of the things i guess that hamsters do is kind of when they're stuck or whatever they'll like kind of like chew at whatever the thing is right so the hamster mm -hmm. had gotten out and was like you know out for like a day or two and then I, I woke up uh, and saw that there was like all of this kind of carpet debris <laughs> right okay. by a door. So the, the hamster had like chewed its way underneath a door. And so there's like this huge hole in the carpet now from the hamster. And, uh, you know, I didn't know anything about like carpet repair at the time. Apparently, it's pretty easy to just cut the bad part out and patch in the new oh, part. <laughs> okay. Well, you should have named the hamster Houdini. I know. So, but my mom started crying and she cried like, as if like her mom had just died. She cried so much, so much. And so I asked my friend, Anne from the book, I was like, why is she crying so much? Like, I don't understand it. And she said, she's not just crying for the, the fact that the carpet is kind of ruined for this day. She's crying because she knows that the carpet, like in this dysfunctional family, the carpet's going to stay that way the whole time. It's never going to get fixed, even though it's easy to fix it. It just yeah. never will. Right. And that is kind of a hard thing to be faced with somebody's dysfunction or be faced with somebody's, you know, issue or, or, or character failing and kind of know, not just, you know, like today, the thing that happened today, but to, to kind of foresee to the future, the, the way yeah. that we often do project into the future and think, okay, now I'm, I'm bearing this burden, not just of knowing this thing, but of knowing that this is what the future holds for them. And it's it's not a good future, you know, and kind of there's nothing you can do about it. it it's too. funny that you mentioned the, the future because like, OK, so that's where I spend a lot of my time. Right. Um, and I, I kind of um, sometimes I have trouble like just coming back down or just connecting with like reality. And, um, you know, that's just one of my. I'm not sure if it's one of my downfalls. You know, I, I I know by this world standards that it is one of my downfalls, but I don't know if it's truly one of my downfalls, if that makes sense. Yeah. But um, I'll just, um, I really just wanted to talk to you to tell you about myself because it, it won't make sense unless I tell you like, you know, kind of like my story or how I came to be like this. It'll just sound like I'm just, you know, talking craziness <laughs> yeah, well I never think that 
But yeah, I can, I, so I have a question for you about the future and then we'll get back to this idea about, uh, you said something about pure. So remind okay. me, those are two follow-ups I have, but yeah, you want to go ahead and, and share your overall story a little bit? Oh, well, yeah, I wanted to tell you that, um, so I don't know enough about um, the, 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 the true meaning of the word sociopath, but I'll tell you that when the word first came to my life, I was already grown. And I think I was like 29 years old. I hadn't, I had never heard this word before in my life. And um, that's what led me to you. It led me to the book and it led me down, um, I guess I'll say a rabbit hole. You know, I was kind of like Alice. I was trying to see how far the rabbit hole went. But um, so the reason this is all, uh, you know, because like like yourself, I, I am uh, what I like to call a raging sociopath at this point. You know, I was born that way. And um, there's a lot of other characteristics about my mentality that, um, or about my mind that are driving me insane. And um, I, I'm just painfully aware of it, you know? <laughs> so it's like, it's like, so basically I'll say, um, you know, I was born different. Um, I had a pretty normal upbringing. Um, I had an older sister, but she was already gone. I was pretty much an only child. And um, it was just me, my mom, and my dad for a while. And, you know, um, it was great. I loved it. Some things happened in my life that were pivotal, but I didn't really realize them at the time. And all I really know is that when I hit a certain age of like 11 or 12, my dad passed and I was kind of like, a, you know, I was real daddy's boy. You know, I was always, what can we do? What can we do, dad? What can we do? And, and um, but basically ever since I was about eight, you know, before, even before he passed, I would always be like, I don't want to say possessed. I'll say there was always like a voice in my head that was telling me very negative things, you know, and not necessarily negative about me, but negative about other people or wrong things or, mm, for lack of a better word, evil things, I'll say. So um, th that was a, a big part of my life. And I think that the problem is, is that I was born with um, just two different sides, which I've come to understand now is two different people and not, so I don't wanna say um, multiple personalities necessarily, but I'll say multiple souls. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna try to um, like connect your religion to my religion. Although I have theories <laughs> about, <laughs> I have theories about how religions are probably unanimous or maybe a bedtime story. You know, it, I'm still up in the air about that one. I don't know, but, um, what I do know is that I've come to a point of, of harmony with um, these two conflicting sides. You know, like I told you that um, I'm very shy and that's true, but I'm also not shy. And that's also true. And you think, wow, this person's a liar. How can he be this? And he can also be that. And I'm not a liar. That's because there's a side of me that is painfully shy, but there's a side of me that just does not care. And um for intents and purposes, I guess we're just going to call that guy um, Black. And that would just be the, the best name I would say for him is, is, is Black. And um, the mentality for me when I was eight was to, you know, just little stuff like steal, um, mischief, create things. And, I, you know, I was always aware that I had very different talents. And... Um, but I have a lot. And I think most of my talents are mental. You know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an X-Men so bad. I wanted to be able to shoot laser beams or do something cool, you know, that was very physical. But every talent that I was blessed with or every gift that I was blessed with is only a mental, a mental gift. So um, one of those is manifestation. So when I was um, 
when I was eight or nine, I would just come up with these grand schemes. I would like manifest these things and I would have people in play, you know, like it was just all like, you know, I was like a puppet master. And, um, you know, I realized some of these things were wrong. I used to do wrong things all the time, but whenever I was with my dad, it was like whatever the evil thoughts that I was having, they, they would just go away. And I wouldn't think anything but him, you know? And I, and I realized that blockage that was there. I realized what was going on there. You know, even at that age, I still realized that, that he was somehow protecting me from my worst impulses, you know? And then that led me to believe that he, he knew who I was, you know, from the time I was born, he already knew. And, uh, but anyway, so my dad was, uh, and I heard this from my mom. She told me later on because, you know, I still find out things now because he was dead early. So I still find out things about him later on. She told me he was the, um, the most understanding man she'd ever met. Hmm. And I, it didn't make sense to me until I realized that one of my talents was understanding. And that might not seem like a, a talent or a superpower, right? But like, if you can understand the person and you can connect with a person, it kind of just opens the gateway to so many other things with that person. So um, yeah, I used to do like little weird stuff. Like um, I was always stealing because a part of my stigma is that um, it's about energy. And, I, and I, I don't project my energy. I don't project my presence. And, you know, the, the shy part of me doesn't want to, but the, the unshy part of me doesn't, doesn't want to for the wrong reasons, you know? Right. So um, no one ever noticed me. And um, well, you saw me earlier and I'm finally revealing I'm a pretty big guy. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm hard to, to miss, you know? You, um, you're, gonna, you're gonna see me, obviously. But to completely lose sight of someone, and that, that's when I realized what was going on, because people would lose sight of me. They would just, mentally, they would just forget I was there. And I mean, I would get all types of stuff. I remember the first time I stole, it was some type of jewelry. And um, I definitely got out, got away with that one. And um, after that, I, used, I just, I don't know. I was addicted to stealing because, you know, I grew up kind of poor. My dad was sick. And I really just was, I had this mentality that I wasn't going to go out like that. Like, I was like, I'm going to get it, you know? Yeah. So um, I would do things I'm not quite proud of. And I would, you know, come up with these elaborate schemes. I remember when I was in high school, I came up with this scheme. That was when we were first going to computers. We were going to electric, you know, everybody had their ID cards. And I found a way to get access to everyone's account. And um, I started my own business. It was, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of proud of it. Not proud of it, but kind of proud of it. But I started my own business because I never had lunch money. And um, we were always too proud to accept free stuff in my, in my family. We, we didn't accept free lunch. We didn't sign up for welfare. We didn't do that. So, um, yeah, I started a business. I would, you know, and, and I used my other gift, which was the understanding to uh, find one lunch lady that would just, she would just like bend to my cause. She would just support my, 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 my hustle for lack of a better word. So um, yeah, that, that was an example of some, you know, um, pretty terrible that I did, but. Well, what was, was the business? <laughs> oh, well, I would get, I would get cookies. Um, I would get the snacks. I would get like the mega meals, double pizzas, and I would just sell them for a lower price to my classmates. So um, they didn't know that they were paying for it. You know, I had this, um, there was a trick where on your report card, it would have the first six digits of your student number. And your student number was like, it was like two zeros followed by those six digits. So when people would say, hey, let me see your report card. What did you get? I would say, let me see your report card. And I would write your student code down. Uh, and yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, pretty <laughs> bad. I'm, I'm. Yeah, it's pretty bad when you say it out loud. Anyway, so um, it's con, okay. artist. <laughs> con artist is probably the word you could use. Uh huh. Yeah. So I did. You know, I, I did. I, I, yeah, go ahead. I well, I have uh, maybe a quick story because you know, as we're saying this, I don't know. I I wonder if people think, hey, that's pretty bad or not pretty bad. It reminds me of my own stealing from BYU. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I forget whether I've told this or not, but uh, coming back from like a big road trip, you know, I think it was coming back from like Yellowstone. You know, I was uh, driving with my girlfriend, Aria, in, in van, and it just happened to be that Provo, Utah was like the exact halfway point. <laughs> we stopped there and like slept in a Walmart parking lot because we we're doing like a, a little van kind of trip or whatever. But <laughs> we had like a couple hours at night before it was like sleepy time. And so I was like, I'll just take you around BYU, you know, show you what's what's happening or whatever. We went inside the uh, it's called the Cougar Eat, <laughs> the, the okay. like kind of student whatever union, I think is what what other people call it. And there were like all these kind of like little restaurants, the Taco Bell or Chick-fil-A, you know, a few others like this. And there were jet, you know, like how they these these like little eateries have like a cooler with like the like 16 ounce bottles of like soda and water and stuff. So it had those coolers, but the coolers were just out and they weren't locked. <laughs> okay. They were like they weren't behind. It was like on a Sunday night or something. So everything's closed because like nothing like that runs on Sundays at BYU. So everything's closed. And but they're just these coolers full of soda out. And Aria was just like, I can see why you started stealing <laughs> these people. <laughs> she's like what is going on she's like i mean if this were me and i showed up here it's almost like entrapment you, you know you you yeah. just right away start a scheme this is what reminded me of it in which she'd be like you know stealing a bunch of bottles of soda and then going up to the dorm and selling them you know and selling them for a discount you know and she's yeah. like and but what would keep the other girls from also like stealing bottles of soda or, and she's like well it would be the convenience you know it'd be like do i want to walk 10 minutes and steal this bottle <laughs> well i've always i've always had a, um, a robin hood complex too so i shouldn't say that that they were necessarily paying for it but i i basically made sure to target um a kid whose family was better off if that, if that makes sense. So yes. I've always had a yeah Robin Hood issue. Mm -hmm. Well, here's another kind of story too. I think that illustrates that um, it's just kind of my guess, my intuition that you might you may relate to this story. Or you told me this story the other day, and my heart was like, oh, okay, about it because she said that she had like her favorite favorite kind of caregiver, right? And she was like, mm -hmm. she was so light. Uh, such a light person you know so good and she just like loved her so much and one time they were out and she went through a phase in which she like loved to get a bunch of little uh, animal figurines mm -hmm. so they, they go to the grocery store or something and and each time she go to the grocery store she get one more and so one time the, the caregiver said you know like oh look at this puppy isn't this puppy like so cute and so aria was like yeah it is so cute that i'm gonna choose to get that Right. And so she she did choose to get the puppy. But the the backstory is she didn't want the puppy. <laughs> she had already okay. like seen something else she liked better, the lion. But she she felt like she didn't want to disappoint her caregiver <laughs> by yeah. choosing something different than her preference. So she said to the caregiver's face, like, yes, the puppy is cute. That's that is what I want. But she stole the lion. <laughs> so she could <laughs> actually get what she wanted. Okay. <laughs> Okay. and I'm like you could have just told her you want the lion I'm sure when she said no. oh look at the puppy the puppy's cute she doesn't no, care she... she's just trying to get you to make a choice yeah no she probably did I don't know I'm I'm kind of like that so you're you're right I, I read too much into um those little things that people say and I can't I can't tell if you know like did she not did she just want you to make a choice or did she really think it's cute I don't know but either way, it's kind of like my my thought is like, well, just get the lion. That's your true preference. <laughs> you know, like, why does it matter if she's like, oh, I really wanted her to have the puppy? You know, who cares? You know <laughs> who cares what? what she thinks? You know what? I, I've done that. I, I do relate to that because I've done that so many times in my life. And I just figured that. Um, honestly, that little bit of happiness for them kind of does a lot like I don't know like, like I've been I've done so many bad things that I just never know when the good thing that I do might <laughs> might do something really good so I just I try to um keep an open mind about stuff like that so if I was in that situation I would have definitely bought the bear too and I would have felt good going home I would have been like yes um I made this person 
yes <laughs> made this person feel a little bit of joy today and it really didn't cost me anything so yeah i, I look at i look at life like that now um yeah but only now i'll be i'll be honest um but yeah i have um a lot of a lot of good things and a lot of bad things happen to me but um manifesting is part of them and um you know i it's just i could talk about this with you for days i know that i knew that coming into it but when um you say let let maybe we we can pause for a little bit about the word manifesting when you say manifesting my guess about what you mean based on kind of the things you said is kind of like you have just a, such a strength of vision and you're charismatic enough to get everybody to kind of go along with it and, you know, kind of do the thing that that is the thing that you wanted to do. Like once you kind of get something in your head to do it, it's like the thing does just happen, you know? Well, so I'll tell you, it's a, uh, it's, it's that, but it's, it's more because, okay. So I neglected to mention that I have, um, I'm a dreamer. Right. Uh -huh. So so when I sleep, I have dreams. I have two to three dreams every night and I never, ever have nightmares. Never. If I have a nightmare, it's because I watched a scary movie and like I'll be with people and they'll be like, why don't you like scary movies? And I'm like, I can't. I can't. And they don't understand why I can't because, you know, I can't. I don't want to bring that to my dream. But so so when I dream, um. I don't know when, I don't know how, but some of the dreams are reality and it, it, it's going to happen. And um, I actually had a very great moment uh, uh, years ago. I caught, I, I, I caught one, I caught the moment where I was in the dream at the time it was actually happening. And it doesn't make sense because I'll have dreams when I'm like 14 that won't come true until I was 30. And it, it doesn't make sense and you know, that's also one of the things that I really wanted to reach out to you about because there's got to be some way or someone that knows some type of um, balance. And that, that's really what I've been looking for. It's like, um, well, for me, it's about, um, I'm a Christian, I'm a Baptist. So um, it's about wisdom and understanding. So they're two, they're two very old parallels and the two very old words for, um, for the old Bible. Christian Bible. So um, my basic belief is that wisdom, which is what I would, I'm going to say for this uh, demonstration, I guess, would be on the left and understanding would be on the right. Mm -hmm. And they represent, you know, the East and the West. And one is woman and one is man. And one is a woman when she's born, right? She's blessed with wisdom. Most of them, right? They're blessed with um, wisdom, which translates to basically power. And understanding is supposed to be man. A man is supposed to be understanding, you know, to other people, to his to his wife, you know, to whoever. And that the the goal was that the combination of the two, uh, which <laughs> I have a crazy theory now. This is where it goes left, right? The combination of the well, two, right? Before it goes left, though, let me let me get a clarification about understanding. When you okay. say understanding, do you mean like understanding like, oh, I'm sorry that happened to you? Like, oh, she, he's so understanding. Or do you mean understanding like discerning, like does does actually kind of is able to discern what's happening with somebody? Yes, the, the second one, definitely the, the latter. Okay. But I yeah. when I when, OK, when I say understanding, I mean, being able to look into a person's life, their psyche, their 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 their, their soul. Mm -hmm. to see what it is that they're that makes them tick what makes them want what drives them what what motivated them to um to get to this point that they're at so i don't just mean like the situation of understanding i mean like understanding that person like as a person that, that was you know that was born and has lived however many years they've been on the earth right so um so you were about to go left. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was about to say that I believe I have a theory. Um, and this this links into I have a lot of theories that connect to other theories, but this is about alchemy. And it's um that the the merge of uh, a being with full wisdom and a being with full understanding would be um the creation of what 
I think an uh, alchemist called a Rebus. And it's um it's a perfect I, it. I think it's R E B R I S. But it's supposed to be the true goal of alchemy. Okay. And um I'm kind of a dreamer, so you're gonna have to go with me on this. But it's yeah. it's basically <laughs> something that I've come up with and I've tested it and I've studied it in my own way. And I can't like, so I can't like go to a textbook and tell you where I'm getting this information from. But like I told you that, I told you I had the voice that was always telling me negative things and to go do this or to um, steal an old lady's purse. Yes, and yes, that's one of the thoughts that I've had many times. And um, there's also um, the other voice, which is the one that I'm talking to you with like now, like that's mm -hmm. my my consciousness, you know, that's, that's where I'm always at, you know? Yeah, but there, there is, there is a, there is like a, a soul back there, and um, we keep, we, we keep him like locked up, kind of, you know, because we just can't let that stuff get out, you know, like it's, it's kind of like a way to control it because before he was a little crazy, you know, he, he always wanted to do crazy stuff when we were younger and stuff, and now only now. Uh, these last like five years I found like a balance where we can like be able to use each other and, and rely on each other's like different um talents because like you know I'm not there's a lot of things that I'm not good at right but mm. there's a lot of things that I don't have to worry about and and I know you're gonna say this sounds crazy there's no way you can have a, a, a separate entity inside of you and I know this is my true belief but I'll tell you so um quick story before I finish explaining the rebirth. Um, I was definitely in a lot of life threatening situations. And um, each time I was, this 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 person that's just, I don't know, that's just more courageous than me, that that's more conscious than me, that has just always been that for me, um, always emerges. And um, there was this one time I was in a convenience store. You know, you ever uh, been to a gas station and just went in to get like something to drink or whatever? Mm -hmm. So um, I was I was at the counter and I was buying stuff and I was about to walk out of the store. And this was a very um, bad point in my life. I was about 21, 22. I was probably not, you know, I wasn't living right. I was doing whatever I wanted. And I was so caught up in manifesting. I was like, well, if I just want to do this, I can do that. And I'll get away with it. If I want to create that, I'll go create it. And there was no, you know, repercussions or anything. And um, man, I tell you, I was at this 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 counter, and I turned to walk out of the door, and uh, a F one fifty just knocked at the door. Like, you know, not a person that I could hold the door open for. No, it's a truck. Just decided wow. to, um, I guess, I don't know, end my life or something, but. I, I felt that moment where I just completely changed. Like I, it, it was like a moment where I was like, no, and I don't know who that, you know, it just, it didn't feel like me. It felt like, yo, um, we're not going out like this. And, um, and uh, so he, so he grabs the door. I mean, so I grabbed the door. Sorry, I don't want to sound too crazy. So I grabbed the door <laughs> and um, I, I push up against it. I, I don't know. It was all instinct. This happened in like four seconds. So I just grabbed the door, pushed on it, and the truck took the door off the hinges and came, proceeded to come in the gas station. And it started um, basically running over a couple aisles and it smashed me into like one aisle, two aisles. And um, it turned off to the left just before we got, you know, to like, you know, something deadly for me, I guess. Mm. And um, the door kind of protected me against uh, the truck just like running over me and I literally slid backwards like I I guess what I tried to do was stop the truck but anyway the door helped the door gave right. me leverage to slide and when I slid that stopped me from being rolled over yeah so so at this point um it's the craziest thing I'll never forget this day the only thing I can think about was all the glass that was breaking and how these people would think that I was dead and you know I'm also uh, I think I'm a comedian I'm not really funny but I think I'm funny to myself and I was like I'm gonna get up and freak this lady out because you know it was, uh, it was a nice Indian lady at the gas station I always come to this gas station okay and, uh, <laughs> she's just screaming her head off she's like she's just going crazy screaming screaming ah, ah. and um 
So I was like, I'm going to hop up like the freaking Terminator out of one of those movies or something. And I just jumped up. <laughs> and the lady was like, she looked at me and she was screaming. And I didn't know it, but I had glass, like little glass shards that were like stuck in my skin and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was wearing a tank top at the time. So, you know, it was just all in my back. And um, the lady looks at me and, you know, I just told her, um, I got to go. And I walked out to the car because I left my car running. You know, I always left my car running for some reason because I was like, I got to go. I got to go. You know, (laughs) I hopped in the car and I experienced shock for the first time in my life. It was amazing. It was like some type of drug or something like, you know, like I had never experienced it before. But it was like um, pieces were moving, like pieces of the world were moving, like cars were switching lanes. And I don't know. It was it was crazy for me. But um, Hmm. I drove home and I didn't file for um people always ask me say why you didn't file to try to get rich why you didn't go to the hospital and I was like well because um at the time my profession wasn't really legal (laughs) and I Uh wasn't like in a position to stop and you know lay there and play dead and I don't know but yeah that's that's one of my survival stories and after that, when I had to have a long conversation with God and just, you know, do some apologies and, you know, um, I, so um, I don't know. He basically told me the words that he was saying to me. And it's, it's, it's nice because like, there's the, there's a third voice that, um, that came when I was 18. And um, that's the voice that told me that I will, you know, I, I made you and I'll, I'll kill you. And that's what he told me when he sent that truck in that gas station and I changed my life. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's what happened. Yeah, that's a crazy story. <laughs> yeah, most people don't believe it though. Believe Nobody. it, absolutely. Yeah, so, so like, yeah, it was always crowded in my head because I'm very like, I got a critic and an analytic. So we're always like having a debate about something and then it was like when I was 18, it was the uh, it was the moment for me. I was walking. I, I remember I was walking down the street, and um, I t- I was going to this girl's house, you know, trying to go over there and hang out with her or something. And then I was just like, why? And something in me, I, I turned in the street, and I turned in the street, and when I turned in that street, um, it was like. I turned in life. I don't know what it was. It was just, it was a complete 180. It was the 180 of my life. And uh, when it happened, I didn't realize what was going on. But ever since then, it was always an extra voice. And it was hard to, it was hard to even tell because like when the voice is talking, it sounds like my voice. And it, it, that's what really throws me off. And I really had to pay attention to like the context, the, the, the tone of the the word or the voice to really tell like who was talking so um long story short um i've been practicing and practicing and doing it for years and um one of those that last one that came when i was 18 was uh uh some type of spirit or some type of angel and um that that angel that spirit communicates like some of like i don't know god's words or and lessons a lot of times too, like a lot of stuff I learn from that voice, but we just call him the old man. That's, that's who we call him. Cause you know, he just sounds, uh, he sounds so old. He's always boring. You know, everything's always like, you know, like wax on wax off and, you know, like, it's just kind of like, yeah, duh, that, that makes sense. But Man, I had to go through so many, like I lost people in my life because of the, the, the vanity from the manifestation. I used to be so vain with it. And, um, um, you know, God took someone from me that was very dear to me. And uh, then, then I, was, I was acting crazy. You know, I was, I was doing it again and he took someone else and just really, he just really drilled it in me. And like, the thing is, it's really a, a good spiritual story too, because he never really gave up on me at all. He just kept, he just kept beating those lessons into me. Like, you know, like it wasn't like an option. Like if you want to just be this, you can just be that. And I was like, no, you're, you're going to be this. And, um, you know, I don't care how long it takes you to get it. And so 
I, I just learned a lot. And basically what I've been trying to do is map down and be able to focus and get all the messages um, to get all the knowledge. And it's just, it's random knowledge. So like an event will happen, something will happen over here and then I'll start talking. And I know it's me when I start talking and I know that, that it's uh, who we, we're gonna call black. I know it's black when it's something negative or it's like condescending. And I, I know it's the old man when it's all slow, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's very, I'm, I'm able to differentiate when they, when they have the, the, the conversation and the, the argument and I'm able to come up with a conclusion better. So, yeah. um, so I guess, what should I say, an example? So I went into management because obviously if I have a gift where I can hear what people think, it's going to be easy to manage people, right? Mm -hmm. So, um. Yeah, and high school was crazy. High school was crazy. But anyway, um, so like I went into management because I, I understand people. And like when I see a person, I'm able to usually just like look into their soul and, and tell what they want, what they need, what's going on at home. You know, I work with a lot of high school kids and like, and it's like, so it's like I'm an empath, right? Also, so it's like a flurry of mental issues, but also gifts. Mm -hmm. that are driving me insane but like you know it, it would drive anyone insane like you have these dreams right that there are visions of potential futures and then sometimes you're in the dream and then when that when that moment comes you have to feel that wave of energy like it always passes through me and people say oh did you just get a chill and it's like that's not just a chill for me I, I know exactly what that is you know it's not like I felt that wave of like that reality coming and then, then me being aware, conscious of this reality, I have to think about what does this imply? Like, like, am I here? So sometimes I'll use that to my advantage. I'll be like, since I'm the only one that's aware of what's going on right now, like, is this meant for me? Am I supposed to use this to my advantage? What am I going to get there? So that's what I've been doing. Um, I went into management. I did that for a long time. I went through a phase where I um I prayed to God. I just wanted to be normal. I said, just take this 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 crap away from me because I didn't know what I had never heard the word sociopath. Still, mm -hmm. at this like I went through all these experiences, got run over <laughs> twice, <laughs> and mm -hmm. um I mean that was just that was just one story. You know, I had a guy he pulled a pulled a gun, pointed a gun in the back of my head, and I didn't even know, and he just uh, he pulled the trigger, but he didn't have any bullets and. Uh, Luckily, I turned around and I hit him with the gun. So, but I just realized like it was a lot of times that I could have died. I might be a cat, you know. And I have a, a similar story. I was pulling out of a, of an intersection and a car just um, the car ghosted me. That's what happened. The car ghosted me, and it uh, that was the craziest one for me. Like I know I pulled out, and I know the car wasn't stopping, but it just kind of went through me. Hmm. And, and like, I opened my eyes and, you know, I was just there. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I drove off. And when this happens, I'm not even to the point where I'm like, oh, my God, what's happening? I'm like, thanks, God. I appreciate you, <laughs> you know, making me so lucky. <laughs> it's, 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 it's at that point because it's just, it's always like that. Like, I could be, you know, I don't know. I could be in the worst situation. And he'll just be like, here, man, here's a lifeline. Like, let me, let me bail you out. Let me do something for you. and. I, I've gotten so used to being that naturally lucky that I just, I don't know. I, I let things slip away. I take things for granted because I'm just like, well, if I don't have this, I'll just go like make it appear some <laughs> someday or something. But anyway, yeah. So I, I don't want to rant. I'm, I was just wanting to share with you, but it's all, it's a lot. So. Yeah. So I, I have my, my three questions now. Did you say Rebus? You're going to talk about that. Um, yeah, that was the, the, my my goal, and um, it wasn't one of my goals, but it was just something that I kept studying. And when I really went to to studying this this thing, uh, I got connected to like the fruits of the spirit and um, the works of the flesh, and how the Bible had these um, contrasting opinions about wisdom or i'm just going to say power power and understanding 
And basically it was the, what I learned over years, basically. Um, I actually learned this from a Led Zeppelin song. So like, um, if I hear a song, I can like connect the song. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a knowledge base. I don't know how to say it. Uh, or think of it like a global encyclopedia global spiritual encyclopedia there you go and it's like there's just these certain things that connect to it like other people connect to it music connects to it um vibrations other things that you could just feel and just resonate they connect with it and um so um <clears throat> it was just that when a woman is born you know she's naturally born into the world she's taught uh about manipulation she's taught about power how to have power over a person how to have the natural power and then I, I studied it and i realized that oh my god women are just lethal like if i ever looked or i you know because um one of my talents is being able to find people that are different or i guess sociopaths i'm not sure what the word is but i can i can find them if they're there and i can hear them the way they speak or if they they say something, it just they just comes to me. I don't know what it is, but I'm like a, a a locator or something like that. But anyway, so I met a few women that were very talented, very blessed, and they just lacked understanding. But instead of having understanding, they just had overwhelming power. And I mean, they could really they could just make a wish and it would come true, and they would have no idea why it was coming true. Or they would they would feel hurt and they would feel pain and the the atmosphere in the room would change to pain. Or even I saw this one woman; she was sad, and then the sky the sky was cloudy and it started to rain. And I knew that it sounded crazy. It sounds crazy still, but I knew that it was because she was sad, and and no one else can, will ever see that. And that's that's what what's always bothered me, you know. So um, anyway. I met some women that, um, and I, and uh, it's it's connected to a woman that has the 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 mentality of a woman, but also a man has more of an advantage, and also vice versa. A man that has you know the mental aspects of a woman has more of an advantage, mm -hmm. and I started realizing that the mixture of the wisdom and the understanding was what was creating these these um i guess um you know baby like like baby you know start starter creations i would say because you know the idea of a true reverse would be like someone that had full understanding and full power at all times which is you know a little absurd but in, but any just the goals so I, I was thinking and i met these people and i just kept meeting people and um that's always been a, a goal of mine. So what I've been doing is trying to basically get access to all the knowledge at one time constantly, but I can't control it and I can't turn it. I mean, it's to the point where I can point it, I can aim it, you know, like a, like a manifestation gun, I guess. I could be like, here, I want this there, or, oh my God, and don't get me started on people. And um, and I'm also sorry, but like, if, if someone does something to me, like, and I wish on a star that, that something bad will happen to you, it's going to happen to you. And that's just, I don't know why it's like that, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be better. I've been better for years, for almost, um, almost a decade, like eight or 10 years, I've been really good. But um, yeah, people still, they still, to this day, they still hurt me. And I don't know, it's gotten to the point now where I just kind of see them for what they are. And then on top of that, I have to deal with so many, so many different aspects of like, is this a person that's thinking on their own? Or is this a person that's being controlled by some type of spirit or some type of demon or some type of person that controls demon? You, you know, you just, you never know what's going on. And uh, <clears throat> I say that and it sounds crazy, but I'll tell you, I've met the devil three times, three times in my life. I met him when I was eight, when I was 21, and again, when I was 24. And I think I met him a fourth time, like uh, a few months ago, but I don't, I don't know. He was like, his energy was around there. But anyway, um, 
I met him. <clears throat> His name was Dennis. He was um, he was like an eighth grade kid. And I was eight years old. He was in the eighth grade, but we had middle school mixed with high school. So, um, you know, he was bullying. He was bullying me a little bit. And um, I didn't know he was, you know, I didn't know he was truly the devil at the time. But um, basically, we got into an ordeal where there was this uh, special needs kid. <clears throat> and he told me something happened that I told him, I know it didn't happen. Because even though I might be a schizophrenic or I might be, uh, I have multiple personalities, I don't lose time in between those person, those people. It's not like a, a switching or a, like a, oh, hey, I was this person today and then I woke up and now I'm this person. No, it's like, we're just there, you know? And the only difference would probably be like my voice or, or the things that I say, the way that I talk. That would be the only difference that, you know, would be, would be visible. But um, <clears throat> anyway, so the, the guy, he told me, I, I was, you know, I was still young, just trying to process this. And um, I got on the bus and I, I, I asked him, I said, could you scoot over? I sat down. That was the end of my day. I woke up to the, <clears throat> to a, what I call the twilight zone. And I've called this the twilight zone because it is the moment where reality twists around a, a singular event and in this case me and and at first when it happened I thought oh no I just must be wrong something's going on and the thing is is that they'll have so many people in on this like it'll be multitudes of people multitudes and um so basically I, I went home and then the next day I went to school and I was called to the office and I said what happened what's going on why am I here um, they said did you did you hit this kid right and I was like, who? They said, the boy that you sat next to yesterday, did you, did you strike him in the back of the head? They said, you know, they said, I hit him in the back of the head and left a mark on him. So when he got home, his mom was upset and all this other stuff. And, and um, it was happening so fast. My mom was there before I even knew it. You know, my dad was sick, so he was never really around for stuff like that. But my mom was there and she was so sad. And she just looked at me and um, I told him, I said, no, I didn't hit him because like, you know, I, I'm not really, one thing about me is I'm not violent. I, I know that. That's not in my nature. Like I might have crazy thoughts and I might see weird thoughts, but it's not in my nature to cause physical harm to somebody. You know, it's just never, it's never been my thing. I've always been a pacifist kind of. But so anyway, so I'm just thinking, I'm like, did I black out? Did something happen? This was, this was, this was like two years before they started putting cameras on school buses. Mm. And um, <laughs> so he said that I hit him and um, my mom was there and it was like this, it was this crossroad moment in my life where she looked at me and she said, I can't believe that you called me here just to lie to me. And me thinking as an eight year old, I'm like, well, I'm telling her the truth, right? This is, this is my logic. I came to this. I don't know why, but I said, if I'm telling her the truth and this doesn't make her happy, then I'm gonna try the opposite. Uh -huh. So I tried lying to her. And then when I lied to her, she believed the lie, accepted the lie, and then we went on. And um, the, the, a couple of days later, like, I didn't know what happened. You know, I was a couple of days later, the guy, he used to always sit behind me, like in the seat behind me. And he was always bigger. So he was kind of like looming over me, giving mm -hmm. me that weird, like creepy, uh, creepy vibe. And so I looked back at him and I was like, man, who, uh, why did you say I hit the boy? Oh yeah, because the guy, Dennis, he was the witness that said I hit the boy. He was one of the witnesses. So I said, why did you uh, say I did that when I didn't? And he told me because he, he thought it would be fun. Mm -hmm. he, he thought it would be fun. And I told him, I said, you just ruined my life. Like you just, he didn't know it at that point, but he, I knew it. He just ruined my, my life and my relationship with my mother. And like, I didn't, I never had a relationship with her after that day Wow. because yeah, yeah, it was crazy. And um, so we, um, I always lied to her after that, you know, I just deemed her as a person that couldn't accept the truth. So mm -hmm. we had a, you know, we had understanding. I would lie, she would think whatever, and we would just keep it going. And I think when I was like 14, I came back one day and I was like, I was like, Hey, Hey mom, I want to tell you something. You remember that day? Yeah, I didn't hit that kid. And you know, I was so pissed at her. You know what she did? She gave me a beat down because she said, you never, 
admit to something that you didn't do. And uh, I hadn't learned that lesson until that point, but it just, it didn't register in my brain because I was like, I'm finally telling her the truth. Like, like I finally felt safe enough, you know, to, to open up to her and tell her. And uh, we had a lot of moments where we talked about stuff like this. Like I went to a, um, yeah, she gave me a beat down for that, but I went to a psychiatrist one time and I told her about uh, what I thought about pain, suffering, wisdom, and understanding. I was 18 at this time, you know, and I told her that. Uh, no, I think I was 17 because I was gone by the time I was 18. I was 17 and I told her, I said, mom, I read this stuff in the Bible. I think it's all connected and I don't think I'm crazy. And she was like, we're taking you to a therapist and we're going right now. So we went to this therapist and I'll never forget this day. There's another, another dog on crossroad, but this guy and I go in, I talk to him. I took my Bible and everything. I was ready. I was like, I was like, bro, we're going to, we're going to talk this out. Like you were going to understand what I'm saying today. And he didn't do any of that. We were in there for like 30 minutes talking kind of like how we are now. And it was one of those conversations that, that, that time gets away from you because mm -hmm. of that, because of that saying time flies when you're having fun, because <laughs> it's true, right? The, these sayings that people come up with, like they have like such a, uh, a deeper meaning, but anyway, and the guy tells me, he says, um, he says, this is going to be the rest of your life. I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, the rest of your life is going to be these moments that I call aha moments where things are going to be going off in your head like bells and whistles telling you yes or no, or this is your moment to have this miniature revelation. And I said, huh? Because this is not what I expected from him. I expect him to be like, you're crazy, dude. Like, get up out of here. And then, he, um, so he told me that and I walked out my mom was ha happy and I just went home and I was like, what just happened? And the, like, like, was that guy telling me I should be a psychiatrist? Mm -hmm. And then um, I heard a noise. It was like 11 o'clock at night. It was a noise that just went off like a bell in my basement. And it was just like, I don't know. The ding was just like a yes to me. It was like the moment that I asked the question, it was just, I don't know. The timing was too suspicious, I guess. And um yeah, that changed my life. That day changed my life. So the bell told you what? That you were going to be a psychiatrist? This, what, no, the psychiatrist told me that I was going to experience the aha moments all, all the rest of my life. I see. And, and when I got to the house, I was asking myself a question about the psychiatrist. Like, you know, like, what, what was going on? Like, am, am I not crazy? Like, does this guy really just truly understand me? And um, the 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 bell went off and I don't know if you know those those garage like in your garage it's always this big two poles that are holding like the whole house up uh-huh and um and like every time you're like in the garage working or something you bump into it it's always like Bing! Mm -hmm. and so like uh yeah we got an old school garage like that and like but there's no one down there so I'm like the, whatever the coincidence that had to happen I'm still believing in this because everyone is mm -hmm. sleeping in the house right now so you know, and right. I know that for a fact. So am I going to have these moments? Yes. And that's my conf confirmation. I mean, I've had other confirmations like of a yes, like where I was slapped one time with a tree branch. It wasn't like a, a hard slap, but it was like, like a, I don't know, it was a tree branch that just wasn't close enough to me. Just like kind of, I don't know, the, the wind started blowing and the trees started swaying and um I was having a dialogue again and the tree branch just came down there and touched me and like kind of went on about his business. And I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I've had a lot of weird ones, <laughs> so mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of weird moments, but um, all this to say is yes, I met, um, I met who, what I believe is the devil a few times. Um, the second time his name was Bill and he taught me a lot of, underhanded things um he taught me how to play pool he taught me how to um how to make money off of people based on their mental perception right he taught me about making money from taking money from someone that has money won't make them as upset as taking money from someone who doesn't have money mm. and um yeah, he just taught me a lot of stuff. You know, like I, I wasn't really living my best life at that time. I was kind of like in like gambling houses and like uh, 
clubs, pool halls, stuff like that. And um, this was a guy, this was, he was a 55 year old assassin. Like um, hmm. he, he walked around and nothing, we, we, we labeled him the assassin because he, um, he would throw people through windows. That, like, that was his profession. That's what he did. Mm-hmm. And um, he was the guy, he would have, you know, open access. So when he walked in, they would say, hey, Bill, they would just give him whatever he wanted, drinks, whatever. They would unlock the doors, the keys to the city. And we were just like, who is this guy? But I always, I always had my suspicions and I didn't know that, that he was the devil, but he came back later, um, a few years later. And I had a friend um, that I was kind of taking care of. I was in a weird situation, right? Um, with a friend of mine that was a little, she's going through a rough time in her life, basically. And um, I was trying my hardest to like preserve and protect her soul because we were childhood friends. And uh, one day, uh, Bill just pops up. He just comes back to me. He's like, hey. Hmm. And he says, he says, let me have her. And I knew at that moment that he, I, he wasn't talking about sexually, you know, because she was a very open sexual person. Like it wasn't, I'm not going to say it was a hard task to, um, to, um, to ride this ride. Mm-hmm. But um, when he asked me that, I just knew it wasn't about sex. And um, I told him, no, I, I drew the line right there. I was like, no, I was like, no, I was like, that is what this has been about this whole time. And I knew it. And you're not getting this girl. So nope. And, you know, I don't know. I, I feel good right there. I believed in that. And um, <laughs> that's where it really happened. <laughs> I guess is what I should say. I, I swear it really happened. And um, yeah, I just went through, I went through a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff like that. And it, it was always, um, it was always hard for me because I was going through it alone. But there's just, there, there's a lot of things. So I'll give you um insight. If I tracked it down in my family to DNA and it's uh, it's my mom. I don't know anything past her, you know, because she doesn't know who her father is. Mm. So, um, but I tracked it down and um, I went through this, all this stuff before ever learning the word sociopath from you and before mm-hmm. ever learning, um, you know, how I wanted to do or if I wanted, I like, I, after all this stuff happened, I prayed to God. I said, take this away from me. I don't want to do this anymore, ever again. And um, he took it away. He gave me a normal life. And um, I had a girlfriend, I moved in with her. It was cool, you know, like we did normal things every day. We played video games. That, that was my jam, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I, I just, I loved it for a time, but after about, I, I think you mentioned this in your book in about two to three years, it's, um, it's like this time thing where um, every two to three years, something has to change. And for me, it's that I grow or I, um, I learned how to do something new. But um, after about two, three years, I said, no, I said, this is not going to be a phase that changes. I'm going to keep this. This is going to happen. We made it like four years and like something in me just, I don't know. It just drove me away from her. And we ended up, uh, we ended up splitting and I couldn't stay away from my, um, my talent or gift, whatever Mm -hmm. you call it, my my sociopathic tendencies. I couldn't stay away from them. And I didn't know who I was. I had no idea until I, until I was um, in another relationship years later. This is like two years later. I'm in another relationship with a woman that, that I, I truly was in love with. And when I say love, okay, so I don't, um, I wish I could give you a rundown of all the issues I had, but I don't feel emotions, right? Like I had a funeral, my dad died. I couldn't even cry there. I couldn't cry because like, I can't, I can't cry because I'm an overthinker. So I can't, I can't force myself to do something so weak when I'm painfully in control of my own thoughts. If that, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. I, I, so I can't force myself to do that. So over the years, if I needed a good cry, sometimes God has played a few songs for me. One song that has always made me cry is Red Hot Chili Peppers, Under the Bridge. <laughs> and that is, that is one of my favorite songs to cry to. Huh. And also uh, Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven. 
interesting yes yeah those are those are those are my songs that i would um i would just be in open dialogue and um he would just find a way to like play them on the radio right when i needed them and like i've never been able to cry be- without that like you know without his assistance or some type of timing or something and i knew i couldn't because like you know like my dad died my uncle died my other uncle died and i know i love them but i just couldn't feel it i couldn't process it the right way or norm i couldn't process it the normal way yeah so i um you know i'm i'm, I'm dealing with that and it's i was also raised in a really strict household you know my mom was really tough. She's the oldest of eight kids. You know, like she she didn't take crap from nobody. And um, the problem is, is that it all stems from her. So, yeah, I, I went through all of this, went through all of that, figured out, learned the word. Uh, I was in my second relationship with this woman that I told her I loved her and I truly loved her, but not because I felt it, because I don't believe in love. I have a theory that says there is a question. I say, how do you spell love? And the way you spell love is T I M E. I believe that, and I will stick with that, because mm-hmm. most people they that's how they perceive love, based on yeah. how much time they've spent with the person. And so I didn't want to. I, I never loved that way. I never loved. My love has always been like the love that you feel for a mother or the love that you feel for a child. And so even in my relationship, I wanted that type of love. So I I I, I didn't fall in love with this woman I chose her if it makes a difference I I chose to love her I chose to give her everything and um but meanwhile I was I was kind of living a lie right she didn't know that I had um you know uh uh alter ego I guess or she didn't know that um I don't know like she knew everything about me she knew about my past but she didn't knew she didn't know that I heard a voice in the back of my head that was, you know, occasionally telling me negative things and another one that was telling me positive things. She, she didn't, she didn't know that. So I was watching the first 48 with her. This was her thing. She loved to just watch first 48. And I was watching an interview with a woman that had, had murdered her own daughter. I'm going to spoil it for you. She did kill, she did kill her daughter, but mm-hmm. in the interview, she was so charismatic that she fooled the police into thinking Mm. that she hadn't done it. And um, they didn't, they couldn't figure it out until they went back and reviewed the the tape and then compared it. And someone said, that's not how someone should act if their child just died. Yeah. And and that was the only way they caught her. Wow. And the word that they used to describe this woman was sociopath. Yeah. And after I watched that, I heard a voice and this is, this is like, this was not, this is like some deep, deep voice. Like it was like, if you go down this path, you're not going to be able to turn back. Yeah. And, and, and I knew it and I tried everything. I tried everything. I tried to talk with her. I tried to bring her with me. I tried to say, Hey, it's not that bad. It, and it's real. You know, I tried to do everything, but I knew, you know, I knew that I, I couldn't run away from who I was because every time I did, you know, God would just pull me back or he would say, you know, you know, I have something that you need to do. And um, so basically we ended up splitting off and I just kind of tried to push her away again in this instance. And it really hurt me. Like it hurt me. She doesn't even know how much it hurt me, but it hurt me because I chose her and I hadn't really been in a relationship with someone that, I chose to love. Like, I didn't really love anybody. You know, I was just in relationships and I loved them, but I wasn't in love with them, like in puppy love with them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, that happened. That year was a terrible year for me. That was uh, 2019, 2020. I don't know. That whole year was pretty bad for me. And, um, I just reached so many low points that I just started getting closer and closer to like um, being fully connected with the, with the manifestation all the time. And um, so it was just, it was a lot for me. And then lo and behold, to find out I've gone through all this, all this metamorphosis and, you know, 
I also did, I went through a, a time period where I was, uh, I was incarcerated and um, I was suspected of, oh no, I got into it with a police officer and the police officer told me that um, I assaulted him. So he kind of like made up a charge to put me in a, in a section that was not really fitting for who I was. And um, so I got um, sent to like high max. I had never seen anything like that in my life. And for me, it was different for me because I have to perceive this and realize all this is going on. Like I had to see 16, 17 year old boys that were going to prison for the rest of their life for something that they didn't know. Then I had to feel all that. I had to process that. I had to see a, a child molester come in here and try to, you know, fly under the radar because, you know, he just sodomized and, and incest and all this other stuff. And I had to feel all of that. Like it, it was, it was difficult for me because I can't just not see it or hear it or know it's there. It comes in and it hits my heart. And then I'm like, ugh. Then I gotta feel whatever they're feeling. And it's just, you know, it's it's a burden at some point. But um I went through all that and they locked me in this room and they didn't give me anything but books. And I, I knew from that moment that I was gonna change my life. I was like, I'm gonna change this narrative because this, is, this just doesn't make any sense. We were on 22 hour lockdown. For two hours, we could come out and um, I would watch the people because I've always been a people watcher. And then they would come out, we would come out one in the morning, one in the, the evening time. You had to eat all your meals inside of the little cell. So um, you had to shower inside the, you know, shower, bathroom, every side, everything inside this one little cell, um, which I got lucky on because I had a handicap cell, which was, you know, it was nice. I I'll always, always get lucky. But anyway, um, so I slowly watched the mentality of the people and I said, I'll never get to the point where I don't come out for my one hour. I'll never get to that point because they, at that point, I know that they've defeated me and I don't even want to see daylight. I don't even want to see anything space for an hour. And um, man, it happened to me about four or five months. I just, I don't know, one more and I just, I don't know. I just, I didn't wake up. I just woke up and I said, forget it. There's nothing for me out there. There's nobody for me to call. And um, it was a really low point for me. <laughs> I guess you can kind of feel that. It was, it was a low point for me where I realized, oh my God, I just fell into the stigma that I, I didn't want to be a part of. I just, and I think it was a couple of days. I just didn't come out at all, you know? Um, whole day would come by and like people would come knocking my door and stuff. Oh, it was so terrible. The only way to communicate was by yelling at a hundred through the wall that was the only way to communicate with anybody and um i just watch stuff like people you know some of the people that are in prison or in jail they're some of the smartest people in the world like they come up with these these ways of passing notes and slinging things <laughs> around using gravity to sling this note around and i just never seen it in my life before they would take mm -hmm. two pieces of string and like a, a, a book and they would hook the books together in order to communicate with each other and pass messages. And I was just like, this is just, these people just, if they were applied, you know, they probably wouldn't even be here. Uh -huh. it's, it's what I used to always think. But um, all that to say is I went through all that in my life. And then I get to, um, to a point where I just hit rock bottom because, you know, I lost my girlfriend. I lost uh, someone else in my family. I'm not even going to mention, but just someone very dear to me just just up and died um two days before my birthday and I was like god what is like it, it wasn't even like I asked the question it was like at this point he was like I'm hitting you with everything like it wasn't even I, I don't know how to describe it like because at this point I can't doubt the conversation that I'm having with him right I can't doubt like am I crazy should I be talking no it's like he's just straight at me he's like you know what's going on, like I'm getting you ready for all of this. And I was like, a person shouldn't have to go through this stuff. And he was just like, but you will. And so um, all that time, I, uh, I hit a, a bottom point. I ended up, uh, I think, oh yeah, I ended up, uh, 
I ended up, I think I lost my job or something, or I changed jobs. And I ended up uh, having less income. So I was like, well, I'm going to move back in with my mom. She's getting kind of old anyway. And uh, she's not really that old, but she's acting like an old lady. She's just, but anyway, it's, it's, it's just nice to like have that relationship with her because I told you from that day when I was eight, we never had a relationship. It was built on lies. It was built on, I really hate you, but you know, you're my family. And um, so um, all that happened and I get back and I think at this point I was like 31, 32. And I said, um, I just asked my mom, she used to always say these weird things to me like, I don't, I would say, why are you so abnormal? Like, you just can't act like everybody else. She would say, being normal is boring. Mm. She would say these weird things. And she would always say things like, I would say, how do you know what I'm doing or trying to get away with? She said, we already know that. And I'd be like, why are you speaking in a group? Like, it's just, it's just you. And I would think she's just so used to it being her and my dad. She thinks that he's still here. And I'm just mm. thinking in my head, I'm like, he's dead. He's not here. Why are you talking like that? And it wasn't until I was fully grown <laughs> that mm. I realized, oh my God, my mom is just like me. Mm. And um, I started talking to her about it. And she just tells me, this is what she tells me. She said, just shut up about that. Don't say nothing to nobody. They're going to tell you you're crazy. That's what she says. <laughs> and I said, why didn't you tell me my whole life? Like I was, I was, I was, I was upset about it, really. <laughs> like, I was mm. like, well, why didn't you? You could have helped clear so many things up, you know? And um, she's, a, she's a force of nature, but she, she's not like me. She's, um, she's connected to that, 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 that power and that, that spiritualness, but she doesn't have an understanding at all. So um, basically what I mean is like in dealing with this woman, I've seen her do everything. I've seen her change the weather. I've seen the weather forecast say it's going to rain today and, and her stop the rain. I've seen her wish something would just appear in the middle of the road and it actually appeared. I've seen her go to a store and, and use all her mental energy to try to find a pillow. And, and this, this pillow will just appear where she wants it to appear. So I've been witnessing these things, of course, my whole life. And I'm just putting it all together. And I'm like, how is she calling me? Like, I'm just so confused. Like, how does she take me to the psychiatrist? Like, and when I talk to her, she's able to really specifically um, diagnose it. Like I said, are your brothers and sisters like that? She said, no, a couple of them, two, but, <laughs> but not all of them. And I said, uh -huh. okay, is my, is my sister like that? And she'll say, no, I skipped her. And I said, so why are you denying this, this thing exists is, is my, my issue with her, but it, it, it all stems from her DNA. So my, my sister uh, has kids, but her kids are like me, except they're, uh, you know, they're pretty evil. Like, you know, I told you about my, my upbringing or my childhood years, but it wasn't like that for my mom. She was, she was good and she was only good and she just chose to be good. So she didn't have any knowledge of anything evil. She didn't know, you know, she doesn't know anything. She doesn't know how to lie. She doesn't know how to get a ticket. She's never been pulled over. She's never done anything. So um, for me now, it's it's kind of fun being able to go and teach her things that she doesn't know and, and mm. tell her how to handle things. Like um, she has a new boyfriend and she's like, how do I handle this? And I was like, you got to be a, a woman. You got to control the situation control him he he's your boyfriend that's your 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 main source of entertainment and she was like yeah you're right i guess huh so it's um that that's been nice to be able to go back and have a relationship with her but other things that aren't nice that um you know just i, I don't know what specific word for it is but i've been telling her that i know that um that so sociopath is one word for it. And um, she was interested when I told her about your book, actually. She's mm -hmm. very interested because she led a very lonely life, but she didn't care is the problem. See, and I've realized that women are stronger than men in this aspect. So when a woman realizes who she is, for some reason, she accepts it more, more easily than a man that has to be in isolation. So I asked her and I said, like, how, 
have you ever, you know, how many people have you ever met that were like you, that, that, that would hear stuff, that would feel stuff and just know that their intuition was right? How many people have you met? And she looked at me, it's the saddest moment of my life. She said, no one. She said, I've never met anyone like me. And I just, if I could have cried right there, I would have cried, but she doesn't, she's not sad about it. She's just like, I am who I am. And <laughs> I, I don't know, but for me, it's a whole different ordeal. For me, it's like, oh my God, like, Jesus, no one understands what's going on. Like, why is it so, you know, why, why am I so isolated? That's what it's like for me. You know, yeah. I, I can't, I can't help those feelings. I don't know why, but they, they're in me. But um, it was nice to come back and realize and, you know, and, and I talked with her about like my nieces and, and nephews and I like that, that, that this, you know, she got, I got mad at her one day. We were having an argument. And I told her, I said, you know, this is really your fault anyway. And she was like, huh? And I was like, oh, I said too much. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I just, I, I don't talk to her about stuff because I've, I've learned one of my lessons is you don't talk to people that aren't interested in this. If someone's right. purpose in life is to just be, what they are, where they are. Like I learned this in management. I had coworkers that I would come in and I knew that I was going to surpass them eventually, but they had no goal of becoming anything more than they were. And I had to realize that some people are just content with being where they are. Yeah. And you just, you just got to leave those people alone. Everybody doesn't want to see this. Uh, I think colorful, you know, brightly lit world that, that I kind of see. And, um, yeah, so it's just the whole, you know, uh, a plethora of things like, and especially with uh, also spirits, like I can't see spirits, but I can feel when one is there. And um, I'll take it as far as to seeing, um, there used to be this creepy girl in my driveway every night. I ran, I ran her over, but, and I know like she was, I know she was there, but she, you know, she was, she was a spirit. And she didn't want anything. They've never like bothered me or done anything malicious to me, which I'm glad of. But um, the girl, I would just, she wouldn't really appear. It happens for me. It's when I blink my eyes and then I open them again. And then I, I, have, to, I have to blink to make sure I'm seeing what I'm seeing. And then it's gone. It's like blink, then I'll see, and then I'll blink again and it's gone. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes it's like, it'll just stay there and like, so I'm doing this and I just wrote over the little girl and I feel like, wow, I just ran her over. But, you know, I didn't. <laughs> but, but, so, so I had that, that issue. So like whenever I find shows or, you know, back to what you were saying about shows and stuff that where people can see ghosts or feel ghosts, I'm always like connected. And I'm always like, I wonder who that author is. He's probably a guy that's going through something. He's like, I just want to convey my message in a way that they'll understand. Mm -hmm. So uh, I did that and I opened my mom up to the worst thing in the world, Game of Thrones. <laughs> and I just, I, I tried to tell her, I was like, I was like, mom, you're, you're the three-eyed raven. And she was like, I don't get what that means. I don't know what that means. I was like, oh, you gotta watch this show. But she, she doesn't get it. She, she, you know, she has other people. She's like, I'm gonna be Jon Snow. I'm gonna be <laughs> three-eyed raven. You know, but it's, I'm jealous of her because she's always been able to turn it off. That's the thing. Mm. She can turn it off and just be a normal, average person just going about her day. And when crazy things happen to her, she just smacks her lips and keeps it moving. But for me, it's just this whole, you know, dramatic life changing event. And then like the earth is shaking. And I feel like the 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 discs, <laughs> the discs that were on a slide. Like I've had a moment where I literally felt like the um the earth rotated slower. Like I had an entire day where I looked at the time and I just said, I, I don't understand what's going on. And, you know, and, and I couldn't, I can't prove it. Right. I have no, nothing to back this up, but I knew that that meant that I was going to be, I had more time than usual to do whatever mm -hmm. it was that I wanted to manifest. So when it came time to manifesting, I knew that that meant I was going to be early because I'm already early today. I'm ahead of schedule today. So then um, I hit my moment, I hit my window, I manifested, and then um, I was able to win. I was able to successfully control it that day. But, but most days it's like, I'm trying to manifest it and just, I mean, like terrible things will happen. And also 
I'm kind of um, bad with money. You know, like I, I'm, it's hard for me to save money because I'll go from like, um, I don't know, like, so for example, my thing now is I'll try to take um, a dollar and turn it into $5. And I had this, uh, this conversation, this dialogue one day where I said, look, I need a bus fare. I said, look, I just need this money to appear. I didn't have anything in my pocket. I was like, I need like three dollars right now. And um, I said, if this is really true, if I could really manifest, just let it happen, right? Nothing happened. So two days later, I go back. I'm at the same spot, and you know, I have money now, and I, you know, I just spent it on the bus fare. But I'm at the same spot, and I'm walking by, and um, I look on the ground, and there's just like all these dollar bills, like they're hitting in the grass but it's just dollar bills and I'm just picking up, I, I had to get to like five or six bucks. And I was just like, 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 is there a delay? Is there a wait? Mm -hmm. Is there a, a way to ask? Is there a, but I also have had times where I have prayed where I, and, and I struggle with prayer because I, I, I think too much. I'm a thinker. So I struggle with prayer, but there are times where I have prayed and I've received an immediate result. Like, like as if, as if some type of divine favoritism, like I've, I've seen like immediate an, an answer and um, it scares me sometimes. So it's, it's just like, I don't know, it's just like, boom, like, here you go. You asked it, boom. And I, and I just, at that point, I don't know what to, you know, like, what do you believe? Like, I, I'm like, but yeah, so that's, there's a lot, there's a lot going on with me. And um, that's, that's, I guess a few snippets that I can try to just wrap my, um, my head around, but um, yeah, that that's me. And <laughs> yeah, well, you know, thank you. I feel like my blood sugar is hitting a wall, <laughs> but I've really enjoyed this so much. I, and there's so many thoughts that I have. Uh, you know, I, I do have a, a couple quick questions and then I think maybe we should try to like meet again and talk in like a month or two or something, you know, in a little bit. It, and it's fine. I, I'm, I apologize. Cause I just, when, when, whenever this stuff, this is a topic, it just gets away from me and it's just too much to, uh, to really explain. I, I want to try to write a book, but honestly I can't. So uh -huh. it's not my, <laughs> I don't think yeah, don't worry. So uh, you said this thing about uh, when you're trying to manifest, you say you you like miss your window or it's hard to hit your window. What does that mean? Uh, it's, okay, so for me, it's about being where you're supposed to be the moment that you're supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. So when I'm manifesting and when you're trying to make lucky things happen, basically, it's all about timing. So uh, sometimes I'll be early, sometimes I'll be late. And um I guess kind of like with the with the with the dollar situation, I was I was late in asking. So I guess what I should have done was known two days ahead of time. And then I would have asked and then the, my timing would have been, you know, correct, maybe. But sometimes I'll get uh, these opportunities where it'll be like. Um, I guess, you know, to make a little some money or some some extra cash outside of work or even to make extra cash at work. It's just I, I can't really wrap my fingers around the limitations of the manifestation it kind of goes everywhere so like you know i was working um okay okay i, I have an example um i went to this job and um we'll just call it um i was selling a lot of chicken mm -hmm. and um you know i really wanted to i was determined that instead of being normal, I was going to manifest a normal life for myself. So I go to building and uh, I'm in this place and I'm just working. And like, I would see people and I would like, I would know my window. Like I had to study for this test, this management test. I had to study for it. And there was this window of opportunity where the big boss came in to visit and, you know, the GM is over the store. So I can't really get past the GM to kind of jump the, the levels that I want to jump, you know? But right. so I see the big boss and I know that what the GM is doing. So I look at the big boss and I don't I don't throw him under the bus because I know, you know, I've done a lot of bad things, as I told you, and I've been trying to keep my karma levels. OK, so I don't throw him under the bus, but I kind of just hint like I'm ready for that test whenever you are. 
you know, like, uh. and it kind of just, that was it, you know, it just, it just set him off. It just set him on a, on a roll of, let me go ask what's going on. Why is he not taking it? And so the guy comes back, my GM comes, he says, you're testing out on Monday. And he just walks <laughs> off. And I said, okay, well, he might not be happy with me, but you know, I got my desired effect. And if, and if I hadn't have been there, and it's about predicting the future also, if I hadn't have been there at that time, then I wouldn't have been able to manifest that because that guy wouldn't have been there to talk to me. Yeah. Or say with other instances, we're working with this company. I climbed pretty high with this company. Uh, there was a guy, I went to another store. I wanted to go and take over a different store because, oh, well, surprise, I, I got to take over the store. It was my store. At the end. <laughs> but so uh, at a later date, I'm trying to take over a different store. And I just decided to like, just completely just go on a, on a, on a limb and just, just entrust in my timing. And the guy that I needed to talk to, he was there. I made my impression, you know, I walked in, looked totally cool. I walked out, left the lasting impression, you know, let him know. Mm-hmm. He's like, man, I want that guy to work my store. And uh, it just planted that seed that I, that I wanted there. And, you know, about three weeks later, I got the transfer. So. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's, it is interesting. There's so many things that I want to kind of think about and talk with you later. You know, this idea about timing is is a really interesting one. And this idea of kind of like seeing the future. I mean, I actually think that this kind of appeals maybe more to a psychopathic audience. You know, they they might think less that that's kind of crazy than the normal people, because like psychopaths, like if you are pattern seeking, <laughs> You know, like if you know, if you plant the seed, it's going to turn into a tree, you know, like most yeah. nursery workers <laughs> know or whatever, right? Like there, there are like patterns, certain patterns in the universe. And I was talking to, I think a friend about this, you know, about like there, maybe, maybe it was on one of these YouTubes, but I think it was a friend where like you see a bird sometimes the bird's not even flapping the wings, you know, the bird's like going up and down. And it's it's clearly following um, kind of channels, patterns in the wind that mm-hmm. that we we can't see, you know. And so it looks really weird, you know. Like if we weren't aware that that's what's happening, we, you know, we'd be like that that's a UFO <laughs> or something okay. like the way that we are, yeah. you know, with like aircraft where we're like that seems like it shouldn't be moving that way or something. Where it seems just really. Or one time, you know, I often see dolphins in the ocean not often but like maybe like once a month or once every couple months few months or something but then one time i saw saw the uh, dorsal fin and i was like but that's a shark i know that's a shark (laughs) (laughs) and why you know it's just like a slightly different movement or something where you're like okay you know and it's just weird because there's so many unusual things in nature that we we have explanations for and i think like we've spent a lot of time talking about a lot of things where, you know, th- these are your experiences. And I, I actually share a lot of these experiences. Um, and I just have maybe like a slightly different kind of like way of conceptualizing it, you know, though. So it's been really interesting hearing you talk about it and hearing about the way that you conceptualize things. And I definitely want to chat you more about it because I think that, I think that the world is like more, complicated and kind of simple than than people will allow for in certain certain instances and i've i've t- i think i have talked about this before that i really try to keep an open mind about things because i find that the more i open my mind the easier my life gets actually <laughs> the better the better yeah. it gets like the more i'm able to see kind of opportunities the more i'm able to see and it's not even like seeing struggles it's like I was fine seeing struggles you know I was always able to see those really well but sometimes to understand that certain struggles are not really struggles like this is just a little thing that will last maybe just another day or something yeah and if I could just kind of get through it like a cold like you kind of understand what like having you're sick and you're like okay but it's going to end in a week and then it's going to go back the way it is but sometimes it's hard for people to know like when, when is this thing temporary? So time is a really interesting issue with me too. And just kind of like this idea of wisdom uh, being power is also interesting, but wisdom, like really, you know, cause I think about this sometimes when I think about like the world, like I have a mindset of abundance, not like a mm-hmm. mindset of scarcity. Right. And uh, one of the 
the really concrete examples I have of this that's like really helped convince me of it is that uh, is uh, trading in stocks, right? Because mm -hmm. I think, you know, I could become a millionaire tomorrow <laughs> by just making the correct stock stock trades, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you kind of think of that, like your your mind is kind of blown about like so, the possibilities, like so, 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 what so if much you is could, possible. Um, what if you could, so, so that's what I'm really stuck on is what if you could catch that moment mm -hmm. and actually make something happen with it? Because um, I think you said something earlier about, um, I think when you were telling me about, um, oh God, what did you mention? Oh, you were, you, you were saying about wisdom. So I was thinking wisdom is basically just being wise. And what is that besides just having knowledge? Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, uh, there's always been this old saying, of, like, knowledge is power. And there's another yeah. quirky old saying that is actually very, very true. So I felt like that the knowledge is actually the power. Because if you think about it, when a person knows more, they're capable of more, you know. When a person right. has a college education, they're, they're more applied. They have more of a successful chance. If a person knows something about you, like when you said you revealed more in the book than you wanted to, that person now has power over you because they know more so i've always believed that the more the more that you reveal to a person the the more power you give that person yes but and i totally remember feeling that way and yeah you know <laughs> i revealed more in the book than i initially wanted to i also think that there is like uh yeah and so i i, I understand completely because i also was like you know like i'm going to be whatever center stage about this thing but also intensely private oddly too like hated to have yeah. people know things about me because i i agree that i thought that same way is that like the knowledge is power or something and i guess now i just kind of think well you can kind of pop yourself out of that dynamic though because you can kind of be in this like web of people or you can go be in a, a different web like, I guess that's what <laughs> the, the weird thing I have to say to you today is that there, there are multiple layers, connections to people. And I think you've kind of touched on a couple that are th different than most people kind of acknowledge or realize uh, possible ones, which is like your connection with uh, people that are not embodied. You know, you said yeah. spirits. Yeah, that, that woman that you drove through uh, the driveway and i do think when yeah. you think about the different connections you have there's some obvious ones that, you, that we mostly don't even think about like your connection with your ancestors you know yeah. like there's a lot of connection like you can you can be in this and you said oh this is something i wanted to ask you about is like how and why do you live in the future and maybe that's like a better question for next time and remind me <laughs> <laughs> future impurity are still the, the ones that i want to ask you about but this idea that we we have to kind of live in this particular reality, uh, like there, when you have these, you mentioned your, that psychiatrist saying that you'll have like these aha moments. And I have these epiphanies too, where they're just, uh, they're like a paradigm shift is mm -hmm. like the best way to put it, where I suddenly realize like, okay, I'm kind of living in 2D about this, but I can live in 3D. And mm -hmm. even some instances on some things where I, I suddenly feel like I'm living more in like 40, you mm -hmm. know, and like truly understanding. And it reminds me actually of being a musician. And we have kind of a funny saying or something, or, or you know, like you, you start off as a musician, like a classical musician, maybe, or like someone who's training, classically trained, you start off liking Mozart, like, oh, Mozart's so cool, you know, like when you're six or something, or like 12. <laughs> and then you're like, Mozart's boring or whatever. And, you know, now I like, now I like Beethoven, right? And then you like go through all these different ones until you kind of get more sophisticated, more sophisticated Mahler, Schoenberg, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And then you eventually end up at Mozart again, because you've learned to appreciate Mozart in a different way. You have changed, you know, and so your appreciation yeah. of him is deeper than it was as a six-year-old. You know, as, maybe as an 18-year-old, you're like, Mozart's boring, but then you learn, you learn something kind of deeper. So the idea that there's like multiple levels of everything that's happening, I think is one that's like a really interesting one. And you get to choose essentially which level yeah. you're existing well, in and operating in like i do really believe that 
Well, for the, the it's funny that you mentioned the music thing, because the music for me is actually the music is uh, one of my channels that I communicate with. And it's, it's one of my, my outlets for like, you know, um, receiving and like distributing power. So like um, I can hear a song, I can learn something from a song, I can get a lesson from a song, I can get a feeling, I can get emotion. And once I once I get that emotion, I can usually copy it or duplicate it, you know, kind of like an actor that needs mm. to be able to make themselves cry on the spot or something. Right. And um, so basically, I, I, I'm just trying to keep track of where I'm going. You know, sometimes your, your thoughts get scattered. But uh-huh. um, your blood sugar is probably too. <laughs> <laughs> basically, the, the music is... um. I had an instance, I think one time, I remember I had COVID. It was, it was when I first got COVID. I was working with my job and, um, you know, I was in the restaurant business. So it was just, it was terrible because we were exposed to it. But um, <clears throat> it was terrible because I had to see it and witness it all. And um, there were things that I kept, I remember recording things. I remember taking pictures of kids that I was I was just scared that if something happened to this kid, that I would be responsible for it. Because mm. at the end of the day, what people really don't talk about is how much um, blood money you get in restaurant business when there is a pandemic. Mm. But <clears throat> being not a complete monster that, you know, even though I'm, I'm kind of, you know, messed up, obviously, but I'm not a complete cold hearted person. So I just I had to take a break from that industry because I realized that I was at the top. I was responsible for that that blood money. I was responsible for making sure that we went from 40,000 in sales to 55, or I was responsible to make sure that we didn't dip ourselves, even though we had to close the dining room because of COVID. And Mm -hmm. then I eventually got COVID. And um, I remember I was still doing my manifesting thing. I was trying to figure out how to manifest at different places and different occasions. And I was, uh, I remember I was sick and I, I thought, that this was it. I hadn't slept for like two days. I, I thought this is it. I was like, I'm gonna die. Like I feel my heart doing weird things, all type of stuff. And I remember my girlfriend at the time, the one that I broke up with. Um, I just remember being in so much pain, and she just had no idea what I was going through. And that's you know along the lines of why I ended up leaving her, because it's just you know it's lonely, right? You go through so much stuff by yourself, even though you're with someone else. It's kind of like why. Why would I do this? But but anyway, um, so yeah, I was able to, in this instance, take a song um, and I was able to turn that song into a type of energy. I don't know how to describe it. I was able to take the mood from the song and turn that into energy to, to keep myself awake, mm. if that makes sense. And it was like, I was so desperate to try this. Like I had to be desperate <laughs> at this point because I was like falling asleep. And I was just like, you know, I've always gotten weird moods and weird energy from from music. So I found out that when I can manipulate my own music or even with a pair of headphones and stuff, I can kind of re- manipulate my own reality based off of the music or the, the, the tone, the timing of the song or the beat, when it drops, stuff like that. Right. So the music is definitely, uh, uh, it's my channel. It's my focus, basically. Interesting. You know, it is interesting because I do find, you know, like, uh, obviously music has like a lot of thoughtful choices that end up being manipulative. Like, as I described to somebody recently, I was like, yeah, but I'm going to play this instrument this way because I want a melancholy, but poignant tone, (laughs) you know? And it's like, I knew that that, you know, doing that and that whatever kind of is the, is how it would like end up being so yeah and people I mean people who run you know to like music at a certain beats per minute probably understand you know at least like a little bit of this so I think it's interesting we we really have gotten deep about a lot of stuff that people probably think you know would agree at least to one or two levels that they they have <laughs> experienced or seen <laughs> Uh, but yes so this uh, so the, there are three topics then we'll talk about next next time if you're okay with it this idea okay. of loneliness, because I think maybe I have some thoughts about it. And then like talking more about this, like future and purity, I think would be interesting things. Is that okay? Can we, uh, can we talk about those things in, in like a few months or something? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Sounds good. And it's been such a pleasure chatting with you and I'm going to keep thinking about all this stuff <laughs> until we talk next time no, it was, and hopefully it was... have some thoughts.
it was an honor to be able to meet you and talk with you and um, express my story with you. Yes. And thank you so much for being honest and being very direct. I appreciate it. And uh, I know that to get so uh, personal is not an easy thing, especially when you consider uh, when when you tend to be uh, very private. <laughs> yeah, to... very private, very shy. Um, but yeah. I just I'm at this point where something's got to change. OK, so good. Gotta... So we'll talk about that, too, next time. I'll talk to you in a, a few months. All right. Thanks again.